everyone. Thanks for tuning in here at InfoGamer. We're going to keep building our snake game. Now, in previous video for our snake playlist, we showed you how to create the functionality for the, for the length of our snake. In this video, we are going to show you how to create the food and make it so that it spawns into our scene. And then in our next video, we'll create the collision when our snake intersects with our food and what happens then. Now, just a reminder, this game that we are currently building is up on the Android market. You can download it and play it and see exactly what the finished product is that we are building. Well, let's get started. We're going to open our game controller script. Now, there's a couple variables that we're going to need to create. We're going to need to create two integer variables. So we're going to type public int, and the variable name is going to be x bound x bound and then the next one is a public int and it's going to be called y bound these variables are used to have a range in which we want our object to spawn a position range for our food object the next variable that we need to create is a public game object and we're going to call it food prefab. Now we want to create a game object variable that's going to hold the current food object that is spawned into our scene. So I'm going to say public game object and I'm going to say current food. Once you've added those four variables, we're going to need to create a new function. So let's scroll down to the bottom. And we're going to type void, and I'm going to call it food function. There's no parameters for this function. Now, what we need to do is create a, a vector2 position in which we want our food to be instantiated at. And so to do this, we're going to use our xbound and our ybound variables. But we're going to first save those positions into temp var variables. So I'm going to create an int. I'm going to call it expose. And I'm going to set it equal to random dot range. And the parameters for the range function are a min. It says min float and max float, but you can actually put in integers and it will return an integer, a random integer value. And so we are going to put in negative x bound for the min and positive x bound for the max. Now we're going to pretty much copy the same line, but use the y values. So y pose is going to be our temp value. And we're going to set it equal to random dot range. And then we're going to use negative, negative y bound and positive y bound. Once you've done that, it's time to instantiate a new food object from our prefab, from our food prefab. And so to do this, we're going to save it into our current food variable and we're going to set it equal to the instantiation of our food prefab and we're going to in order to do this, we need to cast it as a game object. So in parentheses, we type game object. Then we type instantiate. And for the parameters to the instantiation function, we need the object that we want to spawn, which is the food prefab. And I did not spell that right. Prefab. I put a G in it. So let's scroll up. Prefab. There we go. Okay, now we want to create a new vector2 for the position in which we want it to spawn. So new vector2 in parentheses, we type x pose and then y pose. And we close it. And now for the rotation, we just type transform dot rotation. And that'll give us a 0, 0, 0 rotation because the current object the transform that we're getting this from is our game controller object. 
which is at 0, 0, 0 rotation. Now there's one last thing that we want to do for spawning our food, and that is to check whether or not it's visible. Now because different screens have different aspect ratios and different resolutions, we need to make sure that our food is being spawned into the view of our camera. And if it's not, then we need to rerun through our food function. And so to do this, we're going to create a new function, but it's going to be of type I enumerator. And we're going to call it check render. Now to make sure that we can use this function at other points in our game, we want to pass a parameter and it's going to be a game object parameter and we're going to call it in. Now when we first spawn an object into a scene, its current visibility is false, but it's only till the end of the frame, the current frame, that you can then check to see whether it is visible. And so if our food is spawned within camera view, it'll initially be set to false. The, the render view visibility is going to be false. But then at the end of the first frame that it's instantiated into our scene, it'll then become true. But if it is spawned off view of our camera, it'll always be false. And so what we want to do is we want to yield return new and then wait for end of frame and then parentheses and a semicolon. This will wait till the end of the current frame and then it'll execute any lines of code that we put after it. Now we want to check to see whether or not our game object that we've passed into this function is visible. So we're going to create an if statement and we're going to say if in dot get component and we're going to look for a render component renderer and then we're going to outside of the carrots do parentheses and we're going to sit, put a dot and then there's a is visible variable and we're going to look to see if it's false and then we, what we want to do is make sure that we have a food object because we're going to actually use this visibility function for our snake itself once we start coding the screen wrap. And so I'm going to check to see if it is the food. And so to do this, we're going to type if in dot trans uh, tag is equal to and then food. Then we're going to have code that is specific for the food and Later on, we'll show you the code that we need to add to this function if our snake goes off the screen. So if it is food, we want to destroy the in object. And then we want to call our food function. And that will spawn a new food into our scene and then run through this check render function again. And so if we keep spawning and spawning and spawning food off camera, then we're going to keep running through this function. It's kind of a recursive function in a way, but the chances of it always spawning food off camera is very unlikely because the, the area outside the camera view is going to be pretty small because we're going to try and get it close uh, according to the X and the Y bound variables, but if it does spawn off camera, then we're going to run through it again, and hopefully the next time we run through this code again, the food is spawned in view of the camera. But now that we have this check render function written, we need to call it. We need to run through it in our food function. And so after our instantiation line of code, we want to say start coroutine and then in parentheses we call our check render check check render function and inside parentheses we pass in our current food variable as the parameter and the last thing that we need to do 
is call our food function in the start function. So after our invoke repeating, we are going to call our food function. Now let's save it and go back to Unity and see if it works. So before we hit play, there's a few things that we're going to need to do to our game controller script in the inspector. The first thing is we need to drag in our food prefab to our food prefab variable. Next, we need to come up with our X and our Y bounds. So I'm going to select our snake in the scene and I'm going to move it over to as far as I can while it's still in the X view of our camera. So it says 10.7 and I'm going to bump it up a bit more just in case our aspect ratio changes. So I'm going to make it 12 and that's going to be the value that I'm going to put in the X bound. And now I need to find how high up on the Y position I can drag my game object. So I'm going to go up close to the top of the camera and it says 19.5. And so I'm going to put in, let's say 21. Now I can recenter my snake in the scene view and it should be ready to hit play. Yes, let's go ahead, see how it works. And so right here, you can see that this white dot that's not part of our snake is a food prefab. And I can select it and you can see that it's now highlighted in our scene view. This is our food and that is our snake. Now, nothing's going to happen when I run into the food because I haven't created the code for the on collision of our food. So we're just going to phase through it. Yep. And so in our next video, we're going to show you how to create that on collision. And it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave any questions that you have in the comments below.